In this video, we will be setting up our game environment. First, let's take a look at your game sketch from this morning. Write down all of the different kinds of breeds that are in your game and how many agents of each breed you want to create. For this example, the breeds we've chosen to create are monsters, toys, treasure, and decorations. So I'll write those in my table. Great! Now we can create these breeds in our program. I've already done some of these parts so that this video will go quicker, but you'll be able to do the whole process for your games. As you can see, I already have turtle, monsters, toys, treasures, and fruit. But I don't really need turtle and fruit, so I'll delete those. First, I'll go to my Edit Breeds button. Then I'll scroll down to Turtle and click Delete. And then I'll say yes when it asks me if I'm sure. And I'll also go down to Fruit and delete that one and say yes. OK, I've deleted the breeds I don't want. Now I notice that Monsters is spelled wrong. So I'm going to click Rename and rename to Monsters. Now I'll create a new breed by clicking the Add Breed button and typing in Decorations. Now in your project, repeat this process until all of the breeds are set up the way they should be. All right, now that we have our breeds, let's try to create some agents of those breeds. Here in the workspace, make sure that you are on the world page. That's where most of your setup code will go. First, we need to go into the drawers and go to the interface drawer. And choose the when blank is pushed. Drag that out onto the world page. And choose setup from the dropdown. This lets the program know where to begin when the Setup button is pushed. Next, go to the Environment drawer and pull out a Clear Terrain block. And then go to the Agents drawer and choose Delete Everyone. These two blocks are helpful when restarting the game. The Clear Terrain block will reset the terrain to its original look, and Delete Everyone will delete every agent that is left over from the previous playthrough of the game. Next, let's add a Create Do block. This block lets us create agents and give them certain traits. Let's just create one monster for now. So I'll drag out the block, connect it, type in 1, and choose Monsters from the dropdown. Now let's go to the traits drawer. We're going to make this monster be a cube. So I will set my shape to, and then I need to get the built-in shape block, and I can choose cube from the drop-down. If you're looking to use custom shapes, refer to the Use 3D Models skill card. That will let you choose other things like dragons and cars, and fireballs, and coins, and lots of different things like that. Let's see if we're doing this correctly. Press the Setup button, and hopefully a cube will appear in the middle of the screen. Great! Everything looks good. Now would be a good time to save your work as well. Now let's go and change the color of this cube. To do this, we take another set my blank block and put it after the set my shape. And we'll make it be set my color. And then for the color, we'll get the color block, drag it over and connect it. And we'll choose any of the colors that we want. I'll choose red. If you want to use a very specific color, look at the Change Color skill card. Now we want to change the size of this cube. 
I need another set my blank block, which I'll connect, and then I can just type the size that I want. Let's set it size to 3. The default size is 1, so 3 is 3 times as big. If you want your agents to appear in random locations, you have to scatter them. To do this, go into the agent drawer, drag out a scatter block, and hook it into the create block of the breed that you wish to scatter. Now our agent will appear in a different location each time we click setup. If we run the program now, we get a top-down view of the terrain. However, if you want to give a player perspective, where the camera is following the perspective of a particular agent, then you can use the Take Camera block, which is in the Agent drawer. Now we get a first person or player perspective, and the view of the terrain looks like this. Keep in mind that you can only follow one agent around with the camera, so this block should only be used once in your game, if you want to use it at all. Okay, so now that we've finished our modifications for this breed, we'll need to do this for each of our other breeds as well, to make them all be set up the way that we want. 